second issue one of the Friendship is Magic comics, during a massive changeling invasion of Ponyville, we saw several interesting book titles revealed amidst the old Ponyville library's extensive collection. Most of them are either direct or indirect references to classic science fiction, the most noteworthy being Incident at Santa Mira. You see, the fictional California town of Santa Mira is a pretty widespread easter egg, appearing across numerous horror, thriller, and science fiction stories for over half a century. The town was originally created for the 1956 adaptation of Jack Finney's novel The Body Snatchers, using various locations around Los Angeles to replicate the architecture of Mill Valley, where the book was originally set. In the final film, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, bizarre changes in the town's population culminate in the discovery of an invasive extraterrestrial species, a plant-like organism capable of replacing a sleeping person with a near-identical copy. The doppelgangers, nowadays referred to as pod people, are distinguishable by their lack of human emotion, short lifespan, and adherence to herd instinct. By the end of the film, the last remaining human resident of Santa Mira manages to reach the nearby Los Angeles, successfully warning the authorities in the nick of time. What became of Santa Mira in the aftermath is never explained. Even assuming the location wasn't firebombed by the military, the shortened lifespan of the pod people means the whole town was essentially wiped out. The film would go on to become a classic, thus Santa Mira found itself nostalgically referenced about 30 years later during the 1980s. Created at a time when John Carpenter sought to turn the Halloween franchise into an anthology series, Season of the Witch gives their version of Santa Mira its own unique history. Dating from around 1887, this Santa Mira initially developed around farming and dairy products until sometime after World War II. At this point, the town was scooped up by the wealthy Irishman Connell Cochran and turned into a high-security cult-like company town for his Silver Shamrock Novelties factory. This security was enforced through curfews and an ever-present camera system, though most notably through realistic human-like robots that in some cases were used to replace actual people. As per the film's title, Cochrane's plan was to combine technology with ancient ritual magic and witchcraft, and what he called a massive prank at the expense of the younger generation. Committing mass ritual and fenticide using pieces of an enchanted sacrificial stone, Halloween mask, and a countrywide television ad. And all primarily for the purpose of rekindling Halloween's pagan roots. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for Santamir, the factory would find itself destroyed by a massive release of the very same magic Cochrane was harnessing. The plant itself, however, was not completely foiled. Only a year later, the author Dean Kuntz would fit Santa Mira into the setting of his horror novel Phantoms, later receiving its own adaptation. Inspired by such rumoured mass vanishings as the Inuit village on Angikuni Lake, the story has police officers from Santa Mira investigate the nearby mountain village of Snowfield. The entire population has either suffered a mysterious death or disappeared completely, devoured by an ancient organism with the ability to mimic anything it consumes. Starting to notice a bit of a pattern. Following these initial appearances, Santa Mira became a prolific Easter egg, experiencing everything from an invisible man to murder. A visit by the Seventh Doctor, a killer banshee, basically a whole lot of death and extreme weirdness. The 2008 cartoon Ben 10 Alien Force was probably one of the last pieces of media to harken back to the town's roots in the episode Max Out. In the episode, an alien force is using the town to breed mutative parasites in a nearby factory capable of twisting humans into alien monsters. By far the most recent appearance I could find was in Jake Emanuel and William Block's Edge of Sleep, 
an audio podcast from 2019 which featured Markiplier in the main role, at time of recording. In this case, the location of the story is incidental, as the ongoing events involve a global outbreak of nocturnal death syndrome. Pretty much everyone who goes to sleep dies mysteriously, their souls consumed by something that inhabits the dream realm, which can also possess the bodies of those it's taken. Again, a bit of a theme here. So, bearing all of that in mind, what do we know about Santa Mira Equestria? Based on comparison to real life geography, it is likely the town existed on the western edge of the equestrian continent, within the region of California or California. This places it eerily close to the undiscovered west as well as Whitetail Woods, a location with its own history of strangeness. One of the rare few glimpses of the region comes from Friends Forever issue 8 in the settlement of Applewood, inspired by the real life Hollywood. There is the potential for a city called Los Pegasus, a ponification of Los Angeles. However, the name was subsequently replaced by Las Pegasus and is no longer considered canon. If it does exist, it's probably located below Las Pegasus at the base of the vast cloud structure. Indeed, such buildings can still be seen on the official map. In terms of what the equestrian Santa Mira looked like, we know it was originally created in real life using areas around Los Angeles as filming locations. Depending on whether we use Applewood or Los Pegasus as a reference, that could imply something similar to the suburbs from Friends Forever, or possibly even a hybrid of terrestrial and cloud architecture as shown on the official map, though it's probably the former. This is about as close as we can get to visualizing the location, but with all that in mind, what did actually happen here? What was the Santa Mira incident? The general trend with Santa Mira, especially early on, was an outside force invading the town and either consuming or replacing its residents, be it alien, otherworldly, or corporate. For that reason, the context of the easter egg in MLP makes a lot of sense. Changelings, by their very nature, perpetuate the very same tropes and fears common to previous incarnations of the town. Heck, the comic we're discussing makes a very obvious reference to the 1978 remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, so clearly some parallel is being drawn. As such, it's possible Santa Mira Equestria fell victim to a changeling infestation, very much like what we saw happen in the comic. Maybe a little more difficult if we endorse the cloud architecture theory, since changelings cannot naturally walk on clouds. However, such a settlement could still be built with solid platforms like in Las Pegasus. However, we can't exactly rule out the far more unusual explanations either. We know from issue 24 that the far future of Equestria includes both cyber ponies and otherworldly visitors, rendering the sci-fi monstrosities of Santa Mira's past incarnations strangely plausible for MLP. If magic is indeed universal, it makes sense that even life outside the planet may have harnessed it. But what about spiritual threats? Across both G5 and G4, we've seen a wide variety of spirits with their own abilities, some dangerous. And as previously explored, the local area where Santa Mira probably existed already had its own history. From paradoxical geology to mass hysteria involving multiple towns and lasting weeks. If the Santa Mira incident occurred before Luna's return, it's even possible a manifestation of the dream realm grew beyond control, reflecting the events of a previous example. If something unnatural befell Equestria's Santa Mira, it would not be without precedent. In the end, the true fate of this most unlucky of towns remains open to interpretation. Which, of course, makes it the perfect subject for the next contest. This time, we're running an art and lore contest because I really want to see the kinds of scenarios you guys can come up with. 
From now until the 21st of October, the challenge is to create your own artistic interpretation and written retelling of both Santa Mira and the incident. The latter can be as long as you want. Once again, we'll be accepting submissions through either Discord, Tumblr, or YouTube if possible. The winner will be voted on through Discord and YouTube poll from a selection of finalists. A gallery of all finalists will be released on Halloween, and the winner will receive a full reading of the accompanying retelling. And yes, we are open to full fanfiction submissions. As with last year, the contest is open to all skill levels. A big thank you to Windstriker Theories for joining us as our guest speaker for the evening. Thank you all for watching, and good luck.